Greetings to wherever you are from Open Doors Metropolitan Community Church in Seoul, Korea. This is our YouTube channel. We're a community seeking to live out the radically inclusive love of Jesus Christ. We're affiliated with the Progressive Christian Alliance and Metropolitan Community Churches. Please join us now for excerpts from the service held on Sunday, September 20th, 2015, the fourth Sunday of Advent. This, of course, was the last Sunday before Christmas, and the theme of the service is a visit which changes everything. The gospel for this Sunday was the visit of Mary to Elizabeth in the gospel according to Luke chapter 1. As part of the sermon, there was a dramatic reading in which I was helped by Christina Kurtisova, a friend of our congregation, and our thanks to Christina for her help with this. Let's pray. Your invitation, O oh God, compels our ears and stands abruptly brash against the public fears we own. Yet in the moment of desire, we stutter at the call. Complete in us your word, according to your word. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of the prophet Micah, the fifth chapter, beginning to read at the first verse, the second verse, reading to the first part of verse 5. We have both English and Korean versions here, so anyone who wishes to volunteer to read can do so. If you wish to read in Korean, that's fine. Us English speakers can follow along. Anyone who feels so inspired to read may do so. Sure. Okay, great, okay. sure, thank you. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labour has brought forth, then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. Oops, sorry. And he shall be the one of peace. <coughs> the gospel is taken from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, beginning to read at the 39th verse and reading to the end of verse 55. This is, as I said before, this is the visit of Mary to Elizabeth, and uh, this incorporates Mary's hymn uh, of joy known as the Magnificat. And just to let you know, we'll be singing a musical version of the Magnificat to end the reading. And it will be sung to the tune of Kingsfold. If any of you know the hymn, I Feel the Winds of God Today, uh, that's the tune. And even if you don't know it, as, as we normally do, we will, you'll hear the first verse so, uh, played through so that you can become familiar with it. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, 
No, no, it's right, it's right, it's right, keep going. And... One more? Yeah, yeah, the music. No, oh, no, music, sorry. The music, the music, yeah. I thought it's all of a sudden just to finish. No. Okay. Let me see. All right. There we go. Sorry. The poet Jan Richardson writes, you can prepare, but still it will come to you by surprise, crossing through your doorway, calling your name in greeting, turning like a child who quickens suddenly within you. It will astonish you how wide your heart will open in welcome for the joy that finds you so ready and still so unprepared. We've all heard about visits from people who have changed our lives. When I was growing up in Canada and we got cable from the United States, I often saw television commercials of Ed McMahon, who was Johnny Carson's sidekick on The Late Show at that time, and Dick Clark, who was host of American Bandstand, 
walking up to the house of some unsuspecting suburbanite in some, not, some unnamed American city, telling them that they just want oodles of money, or a new car, or a house, or a vacation all around the world, or some other mind-boggling prize from the publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes. All that for ordering a bunch of subscriptions to magazines. Another night, when I was living in Toronto, the apartment I was living in got a knock on the door. My then sister-in-law's boyfriend answered it, and it was an officer from the Metropolitan Toronto Police. He had a Scottish accent, so that's what I'm, I'm uh, doing here. He asked, is Walter here? I changed the names to protect the innocent. He spoke the name of my the sister-in-law's brother. And all of us in the apartment got woken up by that time, and we were raised by the, we were awoken by the activity. We looked around, and and we said, uh, 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 yeah, but he 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 isn't here. And the officer replied, "You're right. He isn't here. He's in the local lockup, the local jail. We found him breaking into the local Wolco store." which was just around the corner from where we lived. Talk about shock. As a student minister, I once accompanied a woman who was going to her home to tell her husband that she was leaving him. There wasn't any specific abuse or terror that was going on in the household. But she concluded, she, she began to realize that she just couldn't live with him anymore. And that she knew that she wasn't going to accomplish the things that she needed to accomplish in her life until she ended this relationship. She had planned her exit for weeks, and, and, and in the moment of the visit, she was cool as a cucumber. But I remember her standing in her pew in church the Sunday before as we sang our closing hymn, tears streaming down her cheeks, and just being unable to sing because she was overcome as she was anticipating the gravity of what she had to do a few days later. Unexpected visits from people can be shocking, heartbreaking, numbing, joyful, celebratory, pleasantly unsurprising. These and many, many more reactions can be the result. Today in the Gospel, we heard of the visit of a young girl teenage girl who was pregnant going to visit another person, a cousin of hers, who was also pregnant, unexpectedly so. We can only surmise what was going on in the mind of Mary in this story. We can imagine the fear, the uncertainty, possibly the terror within her her, in her heart, in her mind. But her cousin Elizabeth spoke of the great things that would happen. She spoke words of comfort, of hope, of joy, and yes, words of love. And these words encouraged Mary to give, to speak her own words of courage. Words of a world upside, turned upside down. Well, today, I want to tell you a story of another surprise visit that changed everything for one man. 
1987, I think it was, I went to the annual meeting of the Toronto Conference of the United Church of Canada. And it was being held that year in the town of Orillia, Ontario. Orillia, Ontario is a small, nondescript, we call it a city, but you'd probably call it a village, of about 25,000 people. And its claim to fame is being the uh, birthplace of the Canadian singer-songwriter Gordon Lightfoot. And the guest plenary speaker for that conference meeting was this man. Yes, and his name was Henri Nouwen, Father Henri Nouwen, a Catholic priest who was serving as the pa pastor of the Lache Daybreak community. Now, if you don't know, the Lache communities, the name was inspired by Noah's Ark, uh, was started by this man, and his name is Jean Vanier. He was a French-Canadian theologian and um, philosopher. His father at one time, his father was the uh, Governor General of Canada, the Queen's representative at one time. Jean Vanier started L'Arche in Trollibois in France because he felt a need to begin a ministry to handicapped people. There are now large communities throughout the world, but today I'm going to try and tell you Henri Nouwen's story based on my recollections of his first plenary talk and from his recounting of the experience for a radio program called uh, A Good 30 Good Minutes. And uh, Christina is going to help us with the traumatic reading today. And I, I, I should warn you, if, if you find me breaking into a lisp and a slight Dutch accent, uh, that's just me getting into character. Uh, I don't know if I've ever warned you this, but I'm, I'm a frustrated actor. So, Henri Nouwen spoke. As I was growing up, I heard two different messages. From my parents, particularly my father, I experienced the expectation to be successful, to make something of my life. I also heard another voice, I think it was my grandmother, who said, it doesn't matter what you become. You can become a businessman, you can become a taxi driver, you can even collect garbage for a living, just as long as you love Jesus. So, I tried to do both. I was ordained a priest. And then I pursued an education in psychology. <coughs> I became very well known, studying and then teaching at places like Yale, Harvard, Notre Dame. I pleased my parents and a lot of other people, and I certainly pleased myself. But then I noticed sometimes when I was talking to thousands of people about humility, I would ask myself, what do these people really think of me? Then I would come home and I was alone. I didn't feel well. I wasn't at peace. I was lonely. I began to wonder if my career was getting in the way of my vocation. I began to feel a lot of anguish. I felt guilt and confusion. So I began to pray a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, let me know where you want me to go and I will follow you. But please be clear about it. No ambiguous messages. So one day, while I was still living at Yale in New Haven, Connecticut, one morning at nine o'clock, there was someone pushing the bell of the door of my little apartment. I opened the door and there was a young woman standing there. She said, Are you Henri Nouwen? Uh, uh, yes, I am. 
I've heard of Jean Bernier, and he, that he was the founder of the Lash communities, and that he worked with mentally handicapped people, but that was about all I knew. Uh, that, that's, that, that's nice, and uh, thank you. Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, oh, no, no, no. I've come to bring you the greetings of Jean Bernier. Uh, uh, thank you. That, that's nice. Do you want me to talk somewhere, or, or write something, or, or, or give a lecture? No, no, no. I've come to bring you the greetings of Jean Bernier. Uh, by that time I said, where are you from? Uh, oh, I'm from uh, Mobile, Alabama. You've come from Mobile, Alabama to New Haven to give me the greetings of Jean Bernier? Isn't that a little much? And then she said, Can I come in? Oh, I'd forgotten my manners. Please, come in, but I have to leave. I have to work, to teach, to meet all these people. Oh, you go, and I'll stay. So, she moved into my room, and I went to work. When I came home last night, I'd sort of forgotten about her. I saw something that I'd never seen before. I walked into my room. The table was beautifully decorated with a lovely white cloth over it. Candles, a bottle of wine, flowers, two plates with nice silver. I just looked and said, what's this? <laughs> We're going to have dinner together. But, but, but all, all these things, where, where, where did they come from? I found them in your own cupboards. My stuff? Yes, it's yours. You haven't even noticed that you have it. Let's have dinner. She and I sat there having this delicious dinner in my own house with my own things. And I thought, what's happening? She stayed three days and helped me with all sorts of things. Finally, she said, I have to go. I just wanted you to know that Jean Bernier sends his greetings. When she had left, I sat in my chair and thought, now this is something special. Somewhere, God is answering my prayer. This is like an angel coming to you, bringing a message and calling you to something new. <clears throat> I wasn't asked to take a new job. I wasn't asked to do another project. I, I wasn't asked to be useful to anybody. I was simply invited to come and to know another human being who had heard of me. About three or four years later, I finally met Jean Vanier. We met at a silent retreat at which no words were spoken. At the very end, Jean said, Henri, maybe we, our community of handicapped people, can offer a home to you. Can offer a place to you where you're really safe. Where you can meet God in a whole new way. It was an incredible experience because he didn't ask me to be useful. He didn't ask me to work for handicapped people. He didn't say he needed another priest. He didn't say any of these things. He just said, maybe we can offer a home to you. Gradually, I realized that I had to take that call very seriously. I realized Jean Vanier's call was a real call came from God. God had sent someone to me and I should take it seriously. I left the university and went to France for a year. Then I was called to become a priest at the Daybreak community. So I went to Tours.
Henri Nolan was the pastor of the Daybreak community in just north of Toronto in Canada until his death in 1996. He ministered to persons with physical disabilities. He wrote and spoke on meditation, being in community, peacemaking, and pastoral care. One of his most famous books was called The Wounded Healer. And as his official biographer, Michael Higgins, has said, he began to realize that he was the wounded healer. Because, as many do, he struggled like other people struggle. He struggled with his depression. He struggled with his need for community. He struggled with his need, with, with his sexuality. And in fact, this struggle may have caused enough stress that it may have brought about his death in 1996 from a heart attack. Yet, the growth of his spirituality and his writing would not have occurred without that unexpected visit. You can prepare, but still, it will come to you by surprise. Crossing through your doorway, calling your name in greeting, turning like a child who quickens suddenly within you. It will astonish you how wide your heart will open in welcome. For the joy that finds you so ready and still so unprepared. Amen. As is our custom, we usually gather together for a little bit of discussion afterwards. And I have two questions. First one. What are the visits, visits made to you or visits that you've made that have changed your life? <coughs> and what meaning do you find in the story of the visit of Mary to Elizabeth? Thanks for checking us out. We encourage anyone who's been watching to offer your own reflections on what you've seen and heard by adding a comment in the comments section of the page. If you're intrigued by what you've seen and heard, join us. All are welcome to join us in our worship and our ministry. We worship at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings in the Hebangchon District in Seoul. For more information about us, our location, and our ministry activities, please check our website at www.opendoorskorea.org. We hope to see you soon.